What's up, everybody? This is Kyron Williams with the Los Angeles Rams running back. I'm super excited to see you guys at the Fantasy Sports Summit. Happy Friday, everybody. We got a good one here for you with Jimmy, a.k.a. the Maverick. It's a good one. We are talking about players you might not want to miss out on players that I've not drafted, Jim has not really drafted, or don't plan on drafting, and we could possibly miss out on league winners. Now, again, we've got a list of 10 guys here, big name guys. Again, we're not invested in, and maybe you should consider investing in. It's a, it's a back and forth discussion on, did we make a mistake? Should we draft them? Are they too risky? Very, very in-depth episode. A lot of fun here. Jim, welcome to the show, man. Excited to dive into the show. Hey, Counselor, uh, happy Friday to you. I'm glad to be here. I'm excited, man, because, again, there's a lot of big names here, guys like Puka Nakua, guys like another guy, other guys we're going to mention, Christian McCaffrey, who could still go off. They could have amazing years, p- finish top at their position, but I haven't invested in them. I have not drafted in them. Some of these guys I really, really aren't even in 16 rounds, so I'm just like, did I make a mistake? We're going to discuss it. We're going to analyze it. I'm really excited to dive in. Um a couple of things I want to talk about here. First and foremost, if you haven't gotten 16 rounds, this is very important. Secure the solution, secure the championship, guys. Go grab it right now. I've linked it below. Sleepers, breakouts, optimal players are drafting each round. Everything delivered on a silver platter to you guys. Literally, guys. You get an email when you sign it, when you uh, sign up. And once you get that email, you get access to everything, guys, from mock drafts to principal cheat sheet, all laid out on a silver platter, 16 rounds, smash your leagues. And of course, when you're in there, you're going to get a discount for Jim Zap, the 16 round plus tool, which is amazing. You get so much insight on players, including contracts to your players, regression players, you know, uh, what else? Bounce back players, everything guys in the 16 round plus tool, additional tools, all the art, you got everything in your arsenal to smash your leagues, right? Jim, we're ready to smash this year. I'm ready to smash. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm excited. And, and you know, I mean, I got to say, when you talked to me about the thing last night, I'm like, uh, why would I have any regrets about not taking these players? I'm still drafting. I still have <laughs> I still have the ability. But but you've kind of finished your drafting. You've, you've yeah. gotten all your drafts done already. I'm done. Um, I still have lots in front of me. So that's that's what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, I'm in seven leagues, and I, I'm, I'm totally tapped out. Like, I, I've never done this many leagues. I usually do about, like, three to four relatively high money leagues. And it's like, you know, even with that, I get irritated because if there's like an overlap of players where they don't, you know, they're not the same player. I got, let's say Henry on one team. I got Kyron on the other, for example, it's like, okay, well I need Kyron to do good here. And I need to, but I'm playing Kyron on this team. And I hate that. Like where your fantasy players are playing each other this year. What I did is I made sure that all my players are pretty much the same across the board, minus a couple of variances. So, I, I think I've got it locked in. So I'm excited to, uh, to do it. I don't know. Let us know what you guys do. Uh, how many leagues are you guys in? Love to get your feedback below. Grab 16 rounds. And of course, smash it, tap it, slap it, hit the thumbs up. Very, very important, guys. Lion mentality. Turn on bell. We are here every morning at 7 a.m. And of course, the 8.30 on the live. Jim's going to join us sometimes on the live as well. Okay? Dude, I'm super excited. Fantasy football is back. A couple of things I want to talk about here. Uh, Breaking Brad, are you in the building? Breaking Brad, where are you? Breaking Brad. We now have breaking news. There he is, Breaking Brad. How have you been, Breaking Brad? Are you having a good day? We now have breaking news. That's good to know, man. I'm glad he's having a good day. So Breaking Brad, he's uh, in a good mood as usual. Same tone. He doesn't doesn't change his tone, that guy. Uh, One thing I want to notice, Jim, I know you're really, really excited about Xavier Worthy, but I saw a depth chart today. And it was highlighting uh, Kadarius Tony. <clears throat> okay. Uh, oh, please. No, no. Come so check, check, the, check this out, though. Kadarius Tony is ranked, uh, I got to pull this up here, ninth on the depth chart, Jim. Ninth on the depth chart. And your guy, who I know you're high on, and the reason I'm va- avoiding Xavier Worthy is because, again, he's not, he doesn't have the clear path to, to wide receiver one. That's my issue. He's slated as. The number three right now, Jim. Xavier Worthy is the three. So if you are drafting Xavier Worthy, be cautious. And that's only on wide receivers. You're not even factoring Pacheco. You're not factoring Travis. Because I know you're high on him, Jim. 
I'm not high on Worthy. Now, the only thing you got going for you is a Rashi Rice suspension, which I don't think we have the time on that. We'll get, it'll be on the field. I don't know if it's going to happen this season. That's another really? thing I've been I've been dealing with is, uh, you know, should maybe we draft some Ra Rashi Rice? Maybe that suspension doesn't come down till next season. And we saw what he did uh, as a rookie. You know, there. Yeah. If he plays the full season, I think he's going to be really good. I think he's going yeah. to be good. But uh, uh, you know, I just don't see how the NFL can let him play after what he did. You know, he put people in the hospital. He almost killed some some people drag racing um, in Phoenix. Yeah. Right? Wasn't that where it happened? Yeah. So you know, you'd think they'd have to level something out on him. But I haven't heard a peep uh, as to any sort of impending suspension. Yeah, neither have I. Neither have I. And that could be one of our regrets. We're talking regrets here. Um, maybe a Rashi Rice not drafting him could be a regret. So that's part of the news here. We, we were having regrets here, even in the news here. Uh, other things I want to note here. Uh, this is another crazy situation here. Uh, Rico Dowell <laughs> has to be the favorite to, the, to, the, to the lead the team in rushing um, this season, according to one of the beat writers. Uh, so Rico Dowell is the favorite, they're saying, according to beat writers, to, to lead the team in rushing. That's pretty sad, man. I don't think Rico Dowell is 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 that good at all. I, I have no yeah, idea. And CeeDee no Lamb isn't even there. <laughs> and so you know what that means, man. Ferguson is the wide receiver one on yeah. the Cowboys this year. Yeah. Wide receiver yeah. one. <laughs> we'll see. I mean, CeeDee Lamb, they got to do something about his deal soon before the season. They can't just start the season without him. They have well, to. he is under contract. He he kind of has to play. Uh, but yeah, he's getting fined. And I think he's been fined like a, a million and a half dollars for not showing up at all during training camp. And and uh, you know, he's not playing to show up for the preseason game either. So uh wow. I don't know. I mean, uh, th this is a this is not a great situation. Um it makes me want to avoid C D Lamb. Uh yeah. I, I haven't the problem is like, you know, these guys want so much money. That's the problem. They want a ton of money. And, you know, when you got these receivers getting paid a lot, guys like Nico Collins, right? Like Nico Collins ain't that good. Like I, he's good, but he's not like outstanding. He's getting paid big dollars. So CD lamb looks at that and he's like, man, like if that guy is getting paid that much, I want more. Right. And you got Brandon Ayuk turning down. Apparently he turned down over 32. I don't know how many years it was Jim, but $32 million. A lot of that comes down to probably guaranteed money. He, he probably wanted more guaranteed. And so yeah. He didn't want to play uh, on the Patriots. He didn't want to play on the Patriots, maybe. I don't well, know. Well, I've heard that it's it's coming down that he's probably going to Washington. Okay. So I like that. I mean, I think I like that's that. great because we know Terry McLaurin is not a one. He's never been a one. No. He just isn't. And to have someone like you come in who can be the one with this hot new quarterback who I really like, uh, you know, um, I really, really like that. I, I hope it goes yeah. through. And maybe Terry McLaurin gets shipped off to San Francisco. That even be better. Uh, I mean, because because apparently San Fran wants a receiver. Um, so I don't know. That could be a great situation for Ayuk, and uh, that would definitely put him on my list if if that I, happens. I dislike the lack of faith that these teams have in their receivers. I mean, you draft Ricky Persaud, what round one or two, wherever he got. I know mm -hmm. he's banged up with the. You know, have faith in him. Make him your one. You know what I mean? Like feed the guy, give him a chance. Like why are they looking at other receivers? Even like the Steelers. I mean, believe Pickens is the one and just have faith in your, in your second guys. Who's there? Jefferson, some of these other guys, like have faith in your receivers. No, we're ready to pay, you know, this guy, $32 million. Even the Patriots, you draft Jalen Polk in the second round. I heard Demario Douglas is doing good in training camp. Have faith in your receivers, build these guys up. Blast but there is something to be said about the difference that an elite wide wide receiver can make for your offense. So we've seen it all the time yeah. when they when you get these hot new quarterbacks coming in. And what's the first thing they do? They bring in an elite receiver. Like Diggs is going to play with C.J. Stroud this year. Yeah. It elevates the game. It takes their team to the next level way more than just Nico and Tank Dell could do. And and you know we've seen it repeatedly through throughout the past decade or so, yeah. you know, when, when they brought in Jamar chase to play with Joe Burrow, even though they already had T Higgins as a one, you yeah. know, it would, you know, it just example after example. And so it is a huge difference, difference maker for a team. If you've got that Good hot point. young rookie quarterback on a rookie deal, you load up talent around him. You get that elite receiving option and you take that offense to the next level. So Good. Definitely, definitely a good point there. Now, again, I, 
uh, Ayuk is just asking way too much. I mean, you're good. You're just not that good, I think. And some people are disagreeing with me. I could Again, I could name 50. I've said it before. I could name 50 better wide receivers. And you're going to think I'm crazy. Trust me. There's a lot of better wide receivers if given the opportunity. I'm just not sold on Ayuk. I don't, I don't care for him. Well, you know, I mean, again, he plays in a crowded receiving core, right? Yeah. He's already in a crowded receiving core, so there's not that much volume to go around. He was the number one receiver on that team last year by yeah. volume. And he has gotten better each successive year he's been in the league. That's all good stuff. That's what I want to see. That's a guy that yeah. can take the leap. And if he goes into a situation where there's less target competition, like Washington, yeah. man, he could really blow up. He could get he could get that 150, 160 targets and really do something with him and be an elite wide receiver one. It's just to go into the right situation. And I think that that would be a great situation for him to go to. We're going to have to see how it all fizzles out. So that's it for news. Another thing I heard that Saturday, the Bills are going to be starting all their starters. So first look at Keon Coleman. I'm excited about him. Uh, they're going to be starting them, I think, for a couple snaps. I don't know if they're playing the whole full first quarter. Uh, what did I read here? I read something here that they might play. I don't know if it's okay. It says, uh, where is it? I got so many story modes here. Make sure you guys are following on Insta, Fantasy Football Counselor. Turn on the bell. Uh, Bill's head coach Sean McDermott says Josh Allen and the other starters will play about about a quarter against the Bears on Saturday. That's good. We're gonna see some oh, okay, Josh. That'll Allen. be exciting. Yeah, yeah. I'm excited for for Keon. Although, man, he's his ADP is probably gonna start skyrocketing if he if they really do something big on on the you know during the preseason game. Yeah, I yeah. kind of like him being under the radar right now. I, you know, I just got him in the eighth round in one of my drafts. I'm like, yes, keep him there. I love that value. So, <laughs> well, one touchdown. He catches one touchdown or you just see him get peppered with targets, you know, three, four targets going his way. And he just does something. He just makes right. a nice juke or jumps over somebody or just does something athletic, remotely athletic, which he's very capable of doing. Sure. Then you've got a shoot up in ADP. And we know it, this is the same thing in the stock market. You know, something happens, you know, everything just kind of, everyone just floods to that thing or sports cards, you know, an athlete does well. It's like everybody just rides the train. It's the same thing with fantasy. Everybody just rides the hot thing, you know, and, and, and you're going to see it potentially booming there. Thank you, breaking Brad. That's it. There's nothing crazy today in news unless it happens between now the recording and the release of this video. Uh, maybe a you between, you know, the time we record this, to the release, Ayuk is now signed with somebody. We don't know, but I would like to see him in Washington. I think that's the best home. It boosts up Jaden Daniels, who we were pretty high on, and it doesn't really affect you know guys like George Pickens' value and other teams where he's going to go in there and destroy their value. And again, I had a lot of Jalen Polk value and Demario Douglas stashed on my bench for free, you know, because I have a lot of depth spots, uh, depth roster. I'm like, put these guys on. I got the wide receiver one. They're going to get volume. And then when I was hearing the Ayuk talk and the Patriots, I was getting, I was sweating a little bit. I'm like, mm, I don't like this. I, I like the value that I got these guys for potential wide receiver one. So it's, I'm glad that didn't work out there with the Patriots. Okay. So thank you, breaking Brad. We now have breaking news. All right. So let's move on to this guy. Let's start with the first player here. We might have some, you know, deep regrets for my drafting you. This is your guy. You put this guy on the list. I have no regrets. I've guys already dealing with the calf strain guys. We're talking about is Christian McCaffrey. I have no regrets. He's going to go down. It's going to be an over the hill moment for McCaffrey. I believe it's this year, if not this year, next year. And you know, I have no regrets, not drafting. I'm, I'm totally okay with this. I know Jim, it sounds like you have, you're having some regrets here. I don't, I don't think you have a lot of CMC stock. Do you? No, I've, I've, I think I picked him up twice. Uh, you know, he's a hard player to get because you got to either have the first or second pick in your draft in order to get him anyway. But uh, again, you know, uh, uh, last season, counselor, don't you wish you kind of took CMC instead of no, Bijan? No. no, I'm okay. I'm, I'm going to live with Really? My Are you sure? Because he would have won you some money. I mean, come on. He was the number one running back in the NFL last year. And he, so he has that yeah. in his realm of possibilities he's on a top five offense he's a workhorse you yeah. like the workhorses yeah. and uh, while yeah he's 28 he could fall off a cliff he could pull a, an austin eckler right he could totally yeah. pull an austin eckler this year i can see that that is absolutely something that can happen to him but he's kind of a beast and he's kind of like he's kind of built yeah. different and 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 if he goes up and he again <laughs> does it again uh, yeah, I'm going to regret passing on him. Uh, you know, huh. I, I mean, it, it's, it, we, we know the talent. He's a very talented guy. He's, he's been a great wide receiver since he went to San Francisco. It's really amazing how his fortunes change when he goes from a bad offense to a great offense, you know, I mean, and, and so, 
yeah. I mean, if he does it again, I'm going to be regretting. Yeah. You know, you know, it's funny. Like I, I'm going to have zero regrets for two reasons. Number one, there's a lot of red flags around him. Where, again, we've talked about all these red flags in other videos. If you haven't, go back and watch the, the thousand other videos I've done on why I'm avoiding CMC. So there's a lot of red flags. And number two, the highest I've ever drafted this entire season in all my drafts was, I think, pick six. I think it was pick six oh, or eight. So it's like a moot point for you anyway. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's like I I have no I, – I wouldn't have – I never was faced with a decision where I had to pick CMC. I know I wouldn't anyway, but – it never even came to the point where I had to decide. It was out of my hands anyway, so I, I'm okay with it. I can only do what I could control. And, you know, fortunately, which I believe it will be fortunate uh, that I avoided him, um, I'm going to have no regrets. But I, I see your point of view, right, for sure. And, again, I don't regret for last year. I'm okay with my decisions because in a lot of my leagues, I had Brees Hall, I had Bijan, I had Gibbs, and I, I did okay. You know, it, it was solid, you know. All right, next guy is is, is my guy here, uh, Puka Nakua, Okay already dealing with some sort of injury and you know again i first and foremost i want to say this about the show i want to i want to put a disclaimer out there i don't regret anything at all okay i really don't there's sometimes i look back and like i'm like i wish i didn't say that or do that like last year damian pierce is kind of my achilles heel i don't really necessarily regret so i want to get that out of the way once i have my players I have conviction in my players and I don't regret, right? I don't have a fear of missing out, right? It's in, in the uh in the mar different markets, cryptos and others, they say FOMO, FOMO fear of missing right. out. Yeah, or other you know, the financial market. I don't FOMO over any player. I want to get that out. But in the back of my mind, I think like maybe there's some upside. This guy could be amazing. That's kind of my thought process. Like, oh, I should have maybe recommended him more. That's my, and, and again, Puka is that guy because he's just so talented. He's so good. His yards after catch are amazing. He catches the ball. He's got a nose for the end zone. He's got a nose for moving the ball upfield. He looked good every time he touched the ball this year. Now, again, we're already hearing at a, at a camp, which was my concern, Cooper Cup doing really well. A healthy Cooper Cup could be fed regularly and really, really dilute the volume. And I'm not saying Puka is a bust, but he could be easily because out of his, his ADP is just so high. Puka round four or five, Makes more sense, but late round one, I believe there's bust written all over this. So I get, I don't feel any regrets, but the ceiling is there. What are your thoughts on Puka here with a healthy Cooper Cup playing all season, assuming he does? Yeah, again, the, the sophomore slump could happen here. I, again, he had a record setting season, the best season ever right. by a rookie wide receiver. And can he really improve on that? Can he can he go farther this year? And it's I don't the, see it. there's a lot of headwinds. You know, the the chief one being a healthy Cooper Cup. You know, right. um, I also have concerns about the quarterback and the fact that Stafford is now 37, which is kind of after the age cliff for quarterbacks for me. Um, you know, and uh, just just a general, he could just be a, a slump. He could, you know, he he could be like a, a, the like a T Higgins. You know, uh, an inconsistent oft injured player. He, he's already dealing with a, a knee injury. He's probably going to sit out the remainder of the preseason. Yep. And, uh, you know, so it, it's, there is a lot of risk there, especially for a guy that's going as early as he is. Yeah. I don't think it's a coincidence that when I tell you that these guys are it's even in Jim's app, I think he's got some of these guys listed as regression years, naturally coming off pinnacle years or old age or whatever it is. It's not a coincidence that like we've mentioned like Puka and CMC are regression candidates and they're already dealing with injuries. Like that's not a coincidence. You know what I'm saying? Like this is stuff that we see beforehand. That's why you guys got to get the 16 round drafts which and the plus because you're going to get that extra insight that other people aren't because they're just simply drafting on ADP. That's not how you're going to win your league. So that's my guy Puka, tons of upside. Next guy, again, I, I don't think I'm going to have regrets. This is your guy here, uh, Jim. So we're going back and forth. Jim's got his guy. We've got 10 guys here we're talking about that could be potential regrets, guys that could absolutely go off absolute league winners that we're not really drafting or investing in that we could look back and regret. Uh, Justin Jefferson here, um, again, to me, again, is that quarterback situation. What are your thoughts on Justin Jefferson? What's the regret here? Well, the regret is where the sports books have him. And, you know, I, I, I always check the sport books to see, you know, what the what the season long projections are for this guy. And, and let me tell you, uh, let me ask you what you think of this. Uh, 1,375 yards and eight and a half touchdowns. Are wow. you going to take the over or under on that? Wow. Um, you're, you're almost tempted to take the over like you're. you're Again, you're I'm tempted to, to take the under on that. I'm like, that is this is this is a clear cut under if I've ever seen one. I, I'm just surprised that his projections are so high given the quarterback situation. 
Uh, but I, I'm, mean, I'm just you know. talking volume. Like again, I I'm sorry. I should have said under on that, but I was just it just seemed low with the eight touchdowns because Addison is facing a possible looming suspension, possible jail time too. Like I, I, he's gonna get off I, anyway. Yeah, but, Hogginson's um, probably not ready to start the year either. So you know, so I, I was just thinking he is the only guy volume. out there. I was just thinking sheer volume, you know, again. And then you're saying, well, Joe, why are you avoiding him? Cause you don't trust Sam Darnold. I don't know. This one's a messed up situation because of Sam Darnold. I just feel uncertainty. And, but that eight touchdown seems low. Um, I don't know, man, who knows who really knows if he plays a full season, who knows? I just don't yeah, want I mean, to invest the first All I got to say is just look at what happened to Garrett Wilson last year, right? Yeah. With a bad quarterback. <laughs> And he still got the volume. I mean, Garrett Wilson still got 160 plus targets over the course yeah. of the year. He just couldn't do anything with it because his quarterback was so awful and his touchdowns were terrible too, because they weren't in very many scoring opportunities. And, and so I'm like, I'm just like, how are the projections so high for Justin Jefferson given the quarterback situation? Cause we know Sam Darnold is a terrible quarterback. He's terrible. He's not going to become good this year. I can tell you that right now. And no. the other guy, uh, JJ McCarthy is a guy that played on one of the lowest passing volume offenses in NCAA and with the Michigan yeah. Wolverines, they were a run first team. He didn't have to, I think he passed the ball. I don't have it in front of me, but somewhere around like 400 times. That's it. You know, I mean, it's a very, very low passing volume guy. These are who are competing to be, uh, you know, the the quarterback for Justin Jefferson. I just don't buy it. I don't. I don't see it. I don't see how it can happen. And you know, Garrett Wilson was like the wide receiver thirty six this past year. I think that that's much more likely for Justin Jefferson than this fifth, what fifth or sixth overall pick in in, in drafts. I mean, I just. I'm sorry. I just yeah. can't talk myself into it one way. But if he does this. I'm going to be eating so much crow. I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know. I I've had plenty of opportunities to take him. I have not touched him in any of my leagues that I've done so far. Me, so. me neither. And, and again, I don't regret it for again, multiple reasons. Number one with the red flags and the quarterback play. And number two, I just like going running back early. I just think there's a ton of depth at wide receiver later where we're going to be totally solid. I have no regrets on Justin Jefferson, but I, I definitely see something there. I just, it's just a weird situation. Again, what I tell people, I was telling people in the last video, if you have question marks where you're like, I'm not really sure about that guy or that, you know, that depth chart doesn't look right. Or I'm not sure who the one is example, Nico Collins and the Texans, like who's the one, or in this case with Jefferson, the, the quarterback, like is the quarterback going to throw consistently? How much volume is he going to get? And hold on his ADP is really high considering if you have these type of question marks, just draft somebody beside him or at that ADP who doesn't have that many question marks, you know, and eliminate the possibility of, you know, of, you know, it's law of averages, right? Eliminate the possibility of failure as much as you can limit those, you know, that's all I'm saying. Be careful. Be careful. All right. Next one here. I, this one, I actually feel I, I'm having, this is the guy that's kind of giving me a little bit of regret. Okay. I want to talk about him as Kyron Williams. Uh, he's coming to the Fantasy Sports Summit. If you haven't got your ticket to the Sports Summit, you're missing out. Grab it below. I've linked it below. It's a virtual conference, August 21st, 7.30 Eastern time. It's going to be on live. Jim's going to be there. Pat Fryermuth is going to be there. Kyron Williams, Trey Benson, Tajay Spears, uh, Rashid Shahid. We're all going to be online. It's going to be like a live podcast. And once you get a ticket, you're entered for a PS5 giveaway. But Kyron Williams is going to be there. And he was on the show. If you haven't checked the Top 10 Running Back show, go back and check that out. His confidence really shined. And I, I know Jim has him in the Dynasty League, uh, and I'm playing against him week one. So, um, yeah, I mean, he sounded really confident. He's ready to go. Obviously, the injury was a bit of a concern last year. The high ADP is a bit of a concern this year. The addition of Blake Corum, who was an awesome running back on paper, looked great in college. I think he's going to dip into that volume. But I just think he's just so explosive. And he did so well with what little playing time he had. I think he played like 12 games, 1,144 yards, 15 all-purpose touchdowns, which is amazing. 12 on the ground, three receiving. Amazing numbers for a guy who didn't play the entire season. And I don't know. This is one of those guys where I'm like, yeah, you know, I kind of went like Saquon there or like a Gibbs or like a Henry kind of on that turn. Or I looked at guys like Laporta or Drake London on the on the turn coming back you know, after, after pick 12, you know, on the early second round. And it's like, Kyron is there, man. And it's just like, I don't have any of him in any of my leagues. I, it's just, I missed out on him. I, I got other guys. It's just, this could be the guy I look back and say, man, he was on my show. We talked to him. I asked him straight up, 
Should we draft you? And he looked me in the eye and he said, well, we should play the clip, the clip actually. I'm going to put the clip up right here, Jim. So check out the clip here. All right, so the fans have some questions for you, man. And the first one is, uh, should we draft you? That's one of the listeners is asking. Is the elephant heavy? Uh, absolutely. Draft me. Draft me. <laughs> I love the confidence, man. That That is absolutely huge. Yeah, so as you can see in the video, man, like, is an elephant heavy? Like, this guy is super confident, man. Jim, what are your thoughts on Kyron Williams? Yeah, I mean, I, I do like Car Kyron Williams. Uh, certainly what he did last year was very impressive. And, uh, you know, you see it in his ADP where he's going on draft boards. Uh, my biggest concern with Blake Corum is his size. He's a smaller guy in his durability because uh, he has missed a lot of time since he's been in the NFL. I mean, again, last year he missed four games. The year before, I think he missed eight. So, yeah. um, you know, uh that and just the fact that they brought in another running back. Uh, I right, think they brought right, another right, running right. back because of these issues. And so, you know, for me, that's my biggest concern. That's the thing that kind of makes me look elsewhere. Cause I, I've taken, you know, I took him in, in the dynasty league, but there's a lot of other drafts where I've, I, he's been on the board and I'm like, okay. And I just bypass him. So, you know, <laughs> yeah. uh, but yeah, that could be a regret because he was uh, absolutely electric last year, uh, especially and, the second half of the season. Won yeah. people a lot of championships. And that's one thing we don't know. With these guys like Blake Corm or Braylon Allen going to the Jets or some of these other, uh, Marshawn Lloyds, we don't know whether these guys are specifically backups. Are they complement players or are they going to be worked in into like a Jameer Gibbs Montgomery type situation or even better, potentially take the job, you know, eventually, you know, there's a situation. What if Blake Corm comes up, lights it up, has this amazing run, and he does it again two weeks in a row and does it again three weeks in a row, and then all of a sudden he starts eating into Kyron or there's an injury to Kyron or injury to, to Brees Hall, and then Brian Allen takes over. All these guys are capable to be RB1s. The same thing we saw with Zach Chabernet. Now, he ended up being more of a backup, but still dipped into it's a Kenneth Walker's work there in Seattle. So always a question mark, always some uncertainty. And that's where I think I was feeling a little uncomfortable with Kyron. I, the Blake Quorum thing kind of, because Blake Quorum could have started anywhere. Similar with guys like Trey Benson. All these guys have starting capabilities. So it kind of bothered me. So, all right, before we get into your next guy here, we're going to keep going on with these possible regrets here. Head on over to mybookie.ag, guys. This is the site I use. Get in on the action. Preseason starts this week. UFC's on. Olympics are going. Mybookie.ag is the site I use. Use code FFC upon sign up. You get up to, Jim, guess what you get up to? This is huge. You know what you get, Jim? What do you get? You get up to $1,000 in welcome bonuses. This is huge, man. So they really reward you with your first deposit. Go to mybookie.ag, use code FFC for all the perks. Right now, head on over to the site, get in on the action, enhance that game-watching experience. And I'm going to be doing a Saturday DFS show. Maybe Jim can join us some Saturdays. We're going to be talking some locks of the week. We also have our preview show. We're going to talk about which, which teams we like for that week. We're going to go over some spreads as well in the preview show. So the site you want to go ahead and play on is mybookie.ag. The code is FFC. Go create an account right now or scan this lovely code that we've put up here on the screen. That's it, Jim. Let's move on here to your next guy, uh, Drake London. You don't have a lot of Drake London stock. I got him in one league, uh, you know, one or two leagues. I, I'm pretty, I'm, I, I might have some regrets here too. I wish I had more Drake, Drake London. I only got him, I think, in one league now that I think about it. Right. And, and for me, uh, you know, Drake Lennon is always up at around the same point that Chris Olave is. And I've, I've been taking Chris Olave. That's, that's who I take when it comes to those two. And, and my big concern is just the fact that this is Drake London's fourth season in the NFL, and we still just haven't seen it right now. Part of that you can blame on the fact that he's had bad quarterbacks. And part of that you can blame on the fact that he had uh, bad coaching and, you know, bad offensive game plans. Um, but then, he, you got to take some responsibility. You know, he's never really been better than wide receiver 36 since he's entered the league. And now he has this humongous opportunity, um, you know, uh, with, with a huge quarterback upgrade, a new scheme that's going to be much more pass heavy and pass friendly, um, which uh, uh, is going to open up the door for way more volume heading his way than what he's seen in the past. And yeah, he can he can take that step and he can become that elite quarter, that elite wide receiver option that we thought he should have been since he entered the league. But then again, he could also just be Jerry Judy and he could just, just not be very good and, and just blow it, you know? <laughs> and so that's kind of why that, that when I get to that point in the draft, when I'm looking there and it's like, Oh, there's, there's Mike Evans, there's Chris Olave, there's Drake London. Who do I take? 
I'm yeah. just not taking Drake London, you know? So, um, uh, it'd be nice if I, if I actually did regret this and that he turns out I- into the superstar that we think he can be. But, uh, I'm just afraid that, you know, if we haven't seen it yet, is it going to matter? You know, <laughs> that's, so. a crazy, that's a crazy stat. I'm actually, uh, checking it. Like he finished wide receiver 36 last year, Drake London. Has he not done, has he done that bad? Like he hasn't yeah, finished- he's been that bad. <laughs> wow i'm looking at it yeah and i don't think the year before i don't know where he finished the year before it wasn't good like and again you could say bad quarterback play but he was such a high draft capital guy first round pick he's out of excuses he's got to get it done man like there's no excuse for him this year again i wish i had more stock in him but the old you know his old behavior his track record doesn't make me feel warm and fuzzy in that second round that's the that's the issue i'm having with him as well although i do see the ceiling i do see the upside i do see the talent and I do see the better quarterback. So if you're looking yeah, at, I, I wish he was, yeah. I wish he was like a fourth round guy as a fourth round guy. I'd be much more in on Drake London, but this yeah. is, we're talking second round, man. I know. I know it's, it's his history. It's his history. That's really bothering me. But again, I'm looking at all the pluses, right? He's trending upwards bounce back, but I, it's like that saying years to wow me. I'm not wowed. I mean, we saw what Garrett Wilson did with bad quarterbacks, you know, Jefferson, all these guys, still re- perform well, even with bad quarterback. What's your excuse, Drake London? I, I don't know. Are you just maybe not that good? And that's what we're going to find out this year. I mean, obviously the Falcons see something. They didn't bring anybody else there. They believe in him, right? So it's going to be interesting. Okay, my next guy here, Anthony Richardson, Jim. Anthony Richardson is my next guy. Um, You know, at the end of the day, the biggest thing with me, again, not really much regrets, but I definitely see a ceiling with this guy, massive upside, massing rushing upside, but you're paying high for this guy. Again, similar to Drake London, it's like the Kinshipsis and these, and these mainstream rankings sniff out something like, I smell, I smell, I smell success here. Right. And they're like all over it. They're like riding it. I'm just like, you know, I'm not smelling any, like I'm, I smell some touchdowns. I smell some rushing yards. I smell some fantasy points, but I see the talent. I just, I don't know, man, that injury is kind of like, uh, you know, this is, this one's a tough for me, one for me because he's so expensive, Jim. That's, that's the issue I'm having. Don't, aren't you having the same issue? Just the, the, the draft cap. He's, he's quarterback five. What has he done? He's done nothing. Right. Exactly. I mean, you know, again, he only played four games last year mm-hmm. and, uh, uh, really, it was three and a half games. Uh, and so, yeah, I mean, it, it's it's just kind of like Kyron Williams. You know, like, can you trust that he could take the next step? I mean, you look at his, uh, you know, the y- you look at his stats, uh, you know, as far as his body size and uh, speed and his arm strength. And Metric. they're all off the charts. This guy is an off-the-charts uh, freak athlete. And if he can make it through a season, he can absolutely be the QB1. He can absolutely yeah. be that. And so that's what people are, that's what people are betting on. And I got to say, yeah, I have very, very few shares of Anthony Richardson. I think I've maybe taken him in one or two of my best ball leagues, uh, just because of the build I was going with, uh, you know, I was pairing him up with Michael Pittman. Um, but yeah, it is, it's tough, but he's, he's a big, he's a big guy. And he just seems like he'd be like, uh, Cam Newton. You know, that, that, yeah. that sort of player, like hard to tackle because he's, he's so damn big. I think he's 255 this year uh, that, you know, that's like a Derrick Henry size, you know, it's like you got a Derrick Henry quarterback. Um, so yeah, it is very, very enticing, but frankly, for me, I've been taking the elite, the other elite quarterbacks. I've been taking Hertz. I've been taking Lamar. I've been taking, uh, Allen. Yeah. I've been taking those guys all, <laughs> All during uh, the off season with my drafts, I like to get myself an elite quarter rushing quarterback. Um, but uh, you know, if Richardson can put it together, he can he can definitely prove me wrong, man. If, if he can if he can do a full season, so it's a weird situation. I don't think his wide receiver is that good. Pittman is is just mid. I don't I don't think he's an amazing receiver. Their tight ends they don't have any good ones. Jelani Woods has done nothing there. Kylan Granson, what have they, what has he done? Josh Downs just got banged up. I, I heard he's going to be missing. Right, Josh forward. Downs is a big injury, so he's going to miss uh, quite a bit of time. So you know, Alex, Alex Pierce sucks. Adonai Mitchell, he's a rookie. We don't know what he's going to do, and like we don't know how much he's going to throw. And then even in the running game, he's got a workhorse running back in Jonathan Taylor. Again, this is why I'm kind of turned off a little bit about Taylor. Like again, this situation is really messy. We don't know what we're going to get. You know. 
Um, it's like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. Remember that old saying, like, we right. don't know what we're going to get with running quarterbacks, you know, like look back at like Mahomes. you know, what were you going to get there? We didn't know. Like I had him in the 10th round, right? You don't know what you're going to get. Josh Allen, like we didn't know he's going to be an amazing Russian quarterback. And then they just start tearing it up. Like I, the situation is, 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 is question marks. I've got question marks written all over it, man. I don't know what I'm getting here. Uh, in this entire situation, not just with Richardson, but the entire situation, Jonathan Taylor, Anthony Richardson, wide receivers, injuries going on. I don't know what I'm getting here. I don't know. Um, anyway, that's that's my thoughts on that. All right, next guy here, uh, Xavier Worthy. This is your uh, your guy. Is it my guy? That I, did you list this guy? Do you got quite? A I style? think I did. That's me. Yeah, I I don't have any. He's again. We talked about it at the beginning of the show. We know what we're getting here with Xavier Worthy. We're getting a wide receiver three four, and that's how I look at this, Jim. I don't I don't see any regrets here. I know what I'm getting. Yeah, I mean, not necessarily. See, the thing the thing with Xavier Worthy is, you know, this team has been looking for a replacement, um, you know, uh, ever since Tyreek Hill left. Yeah, and so uh, who can do it? And, and this year they brought in both Hollywood Brown and Xavier Worthy. And Hollywood Brown, it just isn't. He isn't it. He's not going to be it. And uh, you know they have all those other. You know, you were talking Kadarius Tony. It's like Kadarius Tony isn't anything, man. Yeah. He's nothing. It's it's that that's a non-starter. So you got this. You got this guy that broke records as the fastest player in uh. fastest wide receiver in combine history that can catch passes from the best quarterback in the NFL, Patrick Mahomes. Uh, and if it works, it's going to be a beautiful thing. It's going to be amazing. And, and just, uh, you know, just go back and watch some of that old film of Patrick Mahomes connecting with Tyree kill and the massive chunks of real estate. They were, they were chewing up on the field, just this massive production. And that I see, I, I could see it happening with someone like Xavier worthy. Who's that, who's just so fast and can just get separation way down the field, um, and you're playing with the best quarterback in the NFL. Right. And, and so it's like, it's upside. I'm, I'm just like, this guy could emerge and he could become that Tyreek replacement. And that's, that's hard for me to pass up on. Um, although I have to admit, I have been passing up on him in favor of guys like Lad McConkie and Keon Coleman, you know, cause they all go at about the same point in the draft. So, uh, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I can see that there could be something very special here, but, um, it's a high risk play. So I know what you want. You don't want to be a donkey. That's why you're drafting Lad McConkey. You really are believing in the saying, aren't you? I really <laughs> don't be a donkey draft. Well, I've Lad stayed away from Lad McConkey for right now, but uh, I've, I took him so much in all those early drafts that I did. Um, I, I hope, I hope he gets healthy again. I hope Herbert gets healthy again real quick and they're able to play some more before the season starts. So. All right, next guy here, Jaden Daniels. I know what I'm getting here. I'm getting an ultra elite quarterback. I just don't know what I'm getting with the offense. But for Jaden Daniels, he's he's really good. Like if you look at his college numbers, you look at his college stats, you look at his highlights, the guy is really good. Um, I've got no Daniels stock, but I just the problem is he's still relatively expensive. He's kind of like mid rounds. If he was like a later round guy, I would have definitely been backing this guy up in all my leagues just based on the sheer upside. I've got, this is going to be, I feel that this guy like Kyron Williams might be kind of my Achilles heel in, in what, what could feel like a regret feeling. Um, I haven't been pushing him as hard as I could. I just think the talent is so special. And again, if they do ha acquire a Uke, you know, there's more upside for this guy. I mean, I'm not sold on a Terry McClure. And that's why I'm so high on Ben Sinat as a backup tight end because they don't have any receiving options, any good ones for that matter. And he could be a safety blanket and he's really talented. Sinat is as well. So... Uh, yeah, I think this one could be, I look back and say, man, oh man, I wish I had more Jane Daniel stock. Even if I drafted him as my starter and got another backup, like a Will Levis or something like that and made Daniels my starter, I would have been solid. But again, when I look at ace quarterback, I need to have an ace quarterback that's proven. And we see it. We have safer guys like Hertz, Mahomes and Allen that I can get a couple rounds earlier than Daniels and then feel a little bit more warm and fuzzy going into the season than, than this major upside, but major risk. But Jaden Daniels, man, do you think you're going to have some regrets, Jim, on this guy? Yeah. I mean, if, if Ayuk goes there, I'm going to be much more in on Jaden Daniels. I, I, I haven't taken a whole lot of him and I primarily been taking him as a, as a QB two when I have taken him. Um, but if, if Ayuk goes to Washington and if for some reason, one of those other receivers goes away like McLaurin, uh, yeah. 
man, that's going to be something like, I'm going to go in on that. I'm going to, I will take both those guys and I will see, uh, I will see what happens. Cause that, that could be a very special season to give someone like Jane Daniels, a, a talent like him, a young talent, an elite wide receiver option right off the bat. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I'm feeling better about Jaden Daniels now. I really want to see what happens. And luckily I still have drafts. I still have drafts going on so I can still get this guy. You're, yeah. you're, you're kind of out of luck there. Counselor you've, you've done all yeah. your drafts. So uh, I, don't, I, don't want, I don't want to do any more drafts. I mean, I love doing them. I'm just like, I it's all it's more the in season management. The problem with that is yeah. Like, well, that's, that's why you do best ball counselor. You gotta do more best ball. I gotta it's do great. more best ball. I you draft, more- you draft and you forget and you're done. You're done. You draft and you're done. And it's just whoever scores the most points each week just automatically gets put into your starting roster. And it's just, you're, you're, it's just a horse race. You're just trying to score the most points. So I've, uh, I've created another full-time job having seven big money leagues. It's like, yeah. the problem is it's like, okay, who do we, who do I, I got to go to my first league. Who do I need off waiver wire? Okay. Yeah. Is that guy available? I got to put my bid in and it's like, did I get, and then I got to get it. And sometimes, you know, I, I might end up cause I have to take care of your lineups and the Patreon group and all that. If you haven't joined the Patreon group, get in there. You guys are my first priority. So what ends up happening, Jim, is I, I end up like helping other people or do my waiver wire picks for the other people. And then I end up not editing my lineup. I don't want that to happen this year so i really gotta right, right. hone into my on my 10 teams here <laughs> like it's crazy and, and seven managed leagues is a lot that is a lot i'm actually cutting back on my managed lease this year because it was too much for me last year so seven. Um, i think i'm gonna do five when i'm all done five so okay. that should be a little all bit right. better all right, i just love drafting so much i couldn't resist uh all right devin at chain i got two more guys here devin at chain i don't want to spend too much time on this i'm i'm not drafting i might regret it he has tons of upside tons of ceiling but again i don't like the committee i don't like the the rookie running back there that's a speedster himself i don't like anything about the situation in regards to these guys running by committee. I don't like the injury last year. I don't like the high draft capital. Those are my thoughts on that chain. I'm not going to have regrets, but maybe just maybe if he tears it up, which I doubt he will like really tear it up. Um, then, you know, maybe I'll look back and say, I, I wish I had more, but I'm okay with this. Yeah. Just look at his yards per carry last year. Counselor. Seven just, point just eight. Unbelievable, man. I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, that, that is just a, a shocking amount. And, you know, he's a small guy. Again, it's like Kyron Williams kind of situation. He's a smaller back. Does he have the durability? But he's put weight on this during this offseason. So he's bigger, should be more durable. It's a great offense. I love the Miami offense. For fantasy, it's just great. And he's playing with an older running back. Mostert is 32 or 33. Someone who should be way over the hill at this point. Yeah. Um, you know, so... I, I see the risk of decline is much higher for someone like Mostert this year. Who's going to take the slack? I mean, the, you do have what Jalen Wright. That's the other running back yeah, that's coming in right, as a rookie. Yeah. But uh, I just think Devin Achain is set up here really, really nicely. And with that offensive scheme, with his skills and his speed, um, man, there is a lot of upside there. But uh, yeah, that durability risk is huge. And I just haven't taken a lot of Achain. He's expensive, um, and you know, I, I'm just like, I, I think I'd rather have other players than him. So I I barely have any odd chain. I think I have maybe one or two leagues. And so, yeah, um, but he could be, I mean, he could be like a, I'm not going to say he's going to be like a CMC, but that, that kind of high volume production, uh, high efficiency, huge yards per carry, just so fast and elusive. Uh, it's very, very enticing. We'll see. I, I don't know. I'm not sold on it yet. I got to see more. Uh, and again, he's so expensive. It's like, okay, even if I see more and he crushes, I'll just get him next year. Like, you know, he's already pretty much, you're paying a premium for him anyway, and he hasn't really done anything. Anyway, so we'll move on to the last guy here. Again, make sure you guys do grab 16 rounds and smash it. Hit the thumbs up. It really helps the channel. Hit the thumbs up. Turn on bell every morning, 7 a.m. And we're going um, live every night at 8.30. I got the times right. Okay. Last guy here is Calvin Ridley. This is the guy I just feel, again, you know, a couple of years hasn't been sensational. He's kind of had his on and off. He had a good year last year, became the one, at, you know, in, in Jacksonville, but then Trevor Lawrence didn't have the greatest year. But now Will Levis, this could actually absolutely be an explosive offense. We're already dealing with injuries with DeAndre Hopkins, and I think he'll be back. I think I don't think he's out, but I think this is the over-the-cliff year for Hopkins. But Ridley's one of those guys where you're getting a true wide receiver one with an upside quarterback that's going to throw a lot. And... Calvin Ridley, I just don't have any stock in him. And I, this is the one guy where I'm just like, I wish I had more, but I just keep missing out on him. There's other guys I'm getting where he's coming off and I always miss out on him. I'm looking at like Keon Coleman's and other guys 
I just miss out on it. There's nothing I can do. I've tried to get him and Keon and Ladd, and it just never works out. It doesn't work out. Yeah, I, uh, I have to say, of all the people on this list, this is the guy I have the most shares of. I have tons of Calvin Ridley. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I've been taking him everywhere I can, and and you know, yeah, uh, Hopkins being a 32 year old wide receiver in decline, uh, him coming into a situation where he's he's paid to be the number one. Um, it's a great situation. Uh, this is uh, an offense I think is going to surprise to the upside this year. Uh, so yeah, I've been, I have had no qualms. I've had no qualms taking Calvin Ridley, uh, in my drafts. So, uh, uh, uh unlike you, I have, I have a lot, I have a lot of Ridley. I'm a believer. I want to see him succeed. I want to see him, uh, you know, get it done and, and become a wide receiver one this year. So. Well, we'll have to see. I, I see some upside. Again, my reasoning on why I'm going some of the other guys is because they're young, they're dynamic. I'd like the, the quarterbacks feel more secure in regards to an Allen or Herbert in regards to McConkey and I'm talking McConkey and uh, Keon. You know, I know what I'm getting. You know, life is like a box of chocolates. I know that I'm getting Josh Allen. I know that I'm getting Herbert. I know these guys throw a lot. And I know if they're healthy, they are elite quarterbacks. With Will Levis, I don't know what I'm getting. I, I don't know. I know there's upside there. I think he could be good. I like him as a backup. I don't know what I'm getting. So that's kind of been my hindrance on Calvin Ridley, but I definitely see some upside there. All right. So that's it, man. Jim, man, what a, what a long episode today. It was fun. Um, hope everyone's having a good Friday. I uh, ho hope you have a good Friday and hope you guys have a great weekend. I will be here on my Saturday show and Sunday show. I'm here all the time. So make sure you guys are subscribed. Turn on the bell. Latest news and notes. And uh, man, oh man, it's uh, fantasy football is back, dude. I'm excited. I'm excited, Jim. It's here. Awesome, counselor. Yeah, I know. I well, actually, there's games. We're, we're recording this on the eighth. There, there's a game tonight. There you oh, go. Yeah, first preseason yeah. game. See, that's the thing. Like, why didn't they talk about yesterday's game? Well, because we record this in the morning, the day before, so we're always a uh, a little bit behind. Not too far. Yeah, behind. plus plus preseason games are just there's. It's going to be all backups tonight. That's all you're going to see. You're not going well, to yes, really see Yesterday, there was two games. So people have already. Yeah. So there was the Panthers and the Patriots and the, and the Lions and the Giants. So, yeah, I wish we could have talked about that. But we record this before the game. So too bad. So sad. We'll talk about it the next day. All right, man. Well, subscribe, guys. Smash it, tap it, slap it. We'll see you guys later. Have yourself a great day. Talk soon. Bye, everybody. See you later, everybody.